Well, seeing as they're right here, I thought it would be kind of cool to do a side-by-side -side comparison of my truck and Zach's, just since his is uh, at the shop right now. I just put in some new gears um, into his transfer case. So he has a 10% low range reduction and a 10% high range reduction, um, which I know he's going to love. But this is a 2005 Toyota Land Cruiser. Uh, triple locked, 488 gears, five speed transmission. Um, and mine is a 1999 Lexus LX470, which is front locked, no rear locker, on 430 stock gearings with the four speed transmission. So, I guess I'll start in the engine bays. Um, neither of our trucks have AHC. That's been deleted on mine, and Zach's truck came with a standard suspension. Um, we're actually both running the X2 Power 27F battery. Um, this guy goes to the auxiliary power system, which I've got in the back. It's a little bit messy, but it's basically wired up to power the refrigerator full time um, and that's just coming off of the main starter battery. I've never had a problem starting my truck even after leaving it for two or three days with the refrigerator running. Uh, it's, a, it's a big battery and the fridge doesn't really pull that much current. So, oh, a little bit of water. Same battery, 27F. Make sure you get the 27F, not the 27M, because the terminals are on the opposite sides. I found that out the hard way and had to fight with Batteries Plus to get a replacement. Fuse box, the charcoal canister is up underneath the back side on the, I think, 03 Plus uh, Land Cruiser. These are his relays for the lockers. Um, those come with the Eaton install kit. And I don't remember who makes these grills. I, it, oh, there it is. It's like cruiser grills, I think. But it looks pretty good. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of the look, but I mean, to each their own. I, um, I have no idea what that is. I guess Zach is running some K&N stuff. Um, never bothered to ask, really. Should be interesting. This is his Slee dual battery tray. Um, he's got, this is a solenoid for his winch, which turns power to it, power to the winch on and off uh, from the cab which is actually something that I desperately need to do. Um, that's a safety feature so that if he got into a collision or something and it was short-circuited up at the front, it wouldn't cause a vehicle fire. So, yeah, I need to do that. But he's just got a, a nice little auxiliary battery there. Let's go check in the cabin. Once you're inside, the 05 has the whole display menu and the, um, you know, the, um, the head unit and everything is inside the nav, nav control. Um, Zach has a remote winch controller, which he's got Velcroed right here. It's a pretty nice setup. Um, butterfly cup holders, the little accessory <laughs> bin, that's nice center locker and he's got the 80 series switch for his front and rear lockers with this switch you have to ro push in rotate when it's in the rear position the rear is locked and then you rotate it once more and the front comes on some people want the front locker to be wired independently so that they can lock it um, 
separate of the rear. That's just something to consider if you're going with the 80 series switch. Then these lights here are just some pod lights up in the front bumper. Of course he's got um, RCA off, RSCA off, but he's got a nice little phone mount. I've had to drive his truck around a little bit, so using that has been pretty great. It's just a suction cup mount. Um, thank you, Zach, that's helpful. And, ooh, what has he got? Gamma VD, uh, kind of ironic, he doesn't have that rack. Venture Unknown, Blue Ridge Overland. Hey, I know that guy. Upstate Cruisers, TLCA and the cruisers on the rocks events. This sticker for those who don't know, I didn't know this until I met Zach, but these are actually um, Hundreds in the Hills stickers. And uh, this is from HIH8, which Zach didn't actually attend, but I mean, I would keep the sticker there too. Almost forgot, Zach has his scan gauge mounted right up there. Um, that way he can just look over while he's driving. Nice. Well, in my, my truck, the first thing that I'm noticing is that I keep the seat up a lot higher than Zach does. Uh, I never put those things together until now. Uh, I've got, these are chase lights for the rear uh, front locker, but it's, you know, I've got the rear locker switch ready to go. Uh, for whenever that happens and this is um, 120 volt for the back. I've got a little tiny inverter hooked up to that I've got my scan gauge down here um, Which admittedly I think Zach's positioning for it right up there is a little bit safer So that you don't have to constantly look down and then back at the street uh, but that's a cruiser garage mount and it just bolts right on, which is great. Um, Four-speed transmission. I can't fit the little accessory pod here because my radio is in the way. So that's just a blank. That's where the AHC switch went. Um, I did upgrade my cup holders to the later version with the butterfly. Um, so that I can fit my Nalgene. And honestly, if I'm, you know, that might be one of my favorite modifications. <laughs> but rugged radio, that's a mobile 45 watt unit. And I've just got it magnet magnetically positioned there. Phone mount, I've got a RAM mount, which is actually, uh, I bolted a kayak rigging supply mount to my dash. I did drill th holes through my dash, but it was actually already ruined because this truck came from Arizona um, and the dash mat is hiding the fact that the leather is completely cracked and discolored. And this is a camera mount for the guy that we're filming on right here. On the outside, I'm running the DOM reinforced steel tube uh, white knuckle off road sliders and those are just bolt-on with u-bolts they're pretty beat up as they should be then I've got um, these are 18 inch steelies from a tundra with 35 12 and a half 18 geolander MTs and I absolutely love them the wheel and tire setup is 120 pounds each wheel and tire. Most of that is in the tire. The wheels only weigh about 37 pounds, I think. But let's see what Zach's got. Zach has the trail tailor sliders. Um, I don't know if these are Dom or not, but they are pretty heavy duty. They have two Two rear, well, they have one brace in the in the far back, one brace in the middle, and a, a third up at the front. Mine are uh, made to work with AHC, so they only have two, two mounts. Um, 
Zach actually got his welded on, which, you know, you definitely can do. I chose not to just in case I go a little hard in the paint because my frame would cave in before the slider would actually move. So I'd rather bend my slider than cave in the frame. But to each their own. Zach's got custom skid plates, which um, a friend of his built for him. Out at the wheel, these are Kanadi mud hogs. I'm reading that for the first time now. These are 305 7018s. I don't remember what the what the math checks out to on those, but these are 18 inch method wheels. Uh, they are false bead locks. I don't think they're real. This is underneath my truck. These are Iron Man recovery points. One of the mods that Zach's truck is here to get are actually the polyurethane LCA bushings. Um, so I'm going to be changing those out for him. I've got the Iron Man Foam Cell Pro 2 inch lift suspension with Total Chaos Uniball upper control arms. Those have polyurethane bushings. Uh, those are rad rubber, um, you know, splash guards, whatever, fender well guard things. And most of the rest of all this is pretty much stock. Underneath Zach's truck, he's running the same shocks that I am. These are the Ironmans. Um, he's got Freedom Off-Road upper control arms. And those are a ball joint style arm. I know that Matt Bowling and my friend Caleb Hall use those and they've been pretty happy with them so far. The uh, polyurethane bushings are going in next on Zach's truck, so I'm sure he's excited about that. One other thing I forgot to mention about the front suspension, we are both running Tembren uh, bump stops on the rear of the lo lower control arms. Up front, I've got the Iron Man front bull bar. Uh, mine has been pretty heavily modified. <laughs> it also did some heavy modification to my truck before I decided to get smart with it and cut it away. Um, but just to show you real quick, basically there are two plates in here that mesh up with each other. And I welded the two of them together so that any hit is redirected into this and the whole bumper doesn't shift up or backward because that's what kept happening and it would smash into the body which was really annoying um, but this is the winch plate which actually bolts to your frame so i'm i'm not welding the bumper to the frame just welding the two pieces together zach i think has a coastal off-road front bumper the Coastal is a DIY kit. I think Zach had the same guy build his out um, as who made the skid plates, but uh, don't quote me on that. I do know that this has zero crush, um, what are they called? Like <sighs> crumple zones. It does not have crumple zones uh, like the ARB or the Iron Man. So if Zach hit something, or you know something someone backed into him his truck would you know the frame would be taking a lot of the the brunt of that hit in the back i've still got the factory lc or uh, lsd um i don't think it actually works i think the clutch pads are super worn out i do not have a pck a panhard correction kit for my panhard bar although that might be in my future eventually I just didn't think of it as a priority. I've got shock guards, shock mount guards from Trail Taylor, um, but to be completely honest, they're kind of, I mean, they're extremely beat up. They take all the hits, but I'm not really sure what good they're doing. They're sort of just taking more hits, <laughs> but you know, they work. I've got Timron Timbrin bumps for the rear. They're a little bit high up though, so they don't really cushion much. Um, I'm probably going to fab up a, a one inch drop for those. I do not have a sway bar in the back or in the front. Um, some people say it's unsafe. 
I have never felt out of control on the interstate. But then again, you don't, you know, feel out of control until you crash and burn, so we'll see. I've got the Iron Man heavy springs and Iron Man trailing arms. The, uh, the arm on that side is looking a little banana but not too bad. Um, I could really use a, a gas tank skid plate. Under Zach's truck, I don't remember what springs he's running, but they're obviously not the, um, the Iron Man's. He's got Timberon large bumps uh, with a two inch drop bracket. He's also got the PCK from I'm Keith, or maybe that's Delta, I don't remember. But regardless, there it is. So that's what a PCK looks like on a 100 series. Uh, he's got a, an Eaton knee locker in the back there, and his trailing arms, I think, are Metal Tech. Yeah, no, no, these are, well, these are, uh, these trail tailor? I don't really know. My favorite part of Zach's truck are these uh, trailing arm mount ramps. He had these custom fabricated and as you can see, they take all the hits from a rock and just slide the rock down and along his trailing arm rather than just smashing the, the mounts. I should show you mine, they're absolutely destroyed. This is what a trailing arm mount looks like when it is uh, highly modified by rocks. In the rear, I'm running a high clearance rear descent off-road bumper. I'm in, I'm in love with it. It's absolutely beautiful. The welds are just as incredible as they say. I honestly can't believe how straight they are for being hand welded. I've already put a lot of hits into this one and it's stout. It has not moved. It's amazing. I thought I was living, you know, a normal life with my previous bumper, but it turns out it really just takes good engineering to stop a hit from smashing the bumper into your body. So man, cannot praise this thing high, highly enough. Um, it's got attachment points here as well as some, they're called wing stiffeners that hold the wing onto the frame so that if you hit here or here, the wing doesn't, you know, move. Absolutely incredible. This is the rear, the high, high clearance rear cross member. So I did have to cut mine out and installed my, uh, the new one, which was not actually that difficult. For the purposes of reviewing this thing, I am not going to weld it to the frame. Um, I've just bolted everything on here, but eventually I will probably weld this thing up after a year's time. The easy open and close latch on this thing is also awesome. It comes with a strut. Beautiful. There's a table. Because why not? We're both running these um, snorkel pre-cleaners. I highly recommend one, especially if you're frequenting dusty areas like Moab. Um, Zach has, what is this? I don't even know, it's not branded. Zach has this roof rack. I forgot to mention a couple of things about Zach's rear suspension, which are super cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and come back here. Something the keen observer might realize is that Zach's shock mounts have been raised by two inches. So that essentially gives him one more inch of or I guess two inches of travel 
uh, because the shock was previously here and now it's here at ride height which means that it has more room to extend uh, but when you do that you have to also extend your brake lines so I know he's running slee brake or ugh, slee extended brake lines all that to say Zach's got 80 series Ironman shocks which also give him more travel so his rear end is extremely flexible pretty cool and it's a great setup especially since the front of a 100 series has very little travel well back to the roof racks so there's Zach's I've never seen him carrying anything with it but you know maybe one day he will I've got the Gamma Viti uh, with expo bars for exploration that way you can Keep your feet on the slider, hold on, and you're good to go for the ride. Uh, it also just makes it a lot easier to access the roof, which is great, especially when you've got important spares on your roof rack. This is my spares kit. I keep a lot of the big parts up here, rear drive shaft, CV axle, um, two-wheel drive conversion kit, and inner and outer tie rods. That's all I've got up here right now. Um, I'm sure that there will be more parts in the future. This case is attached with some tube clamps from Tim. Uh, Tim Nakari is the owner and lead engineer at Gamma Viti. Uh, and I've also got, this is a little shower awning. I've used it quite a few times. Find it pretty, pretty helpful. It's also a great little privacy shelter if you need to pull over and use the restroom. Um, and those are attached with quick release brackets from, for an awning. Tim makes those so that you can quickly pull out these pins uh, and take off any of your awnings if you don't need them. So that's pretty nice. I mentioned the chase lights earlier. These are combo lights. They're reverse lights on the bottom and, com and um, chase lights on the top. They're just yellow. Switch them on with that switch and that way somebody in snow, dust, um, thick fog, whatever, can still see me. I almost ran into Lee one time uh, and then he switched on his lights and that made it a lot better. On the driver's side, I've got the Napa. I think it's an eight foot awning. I have no idea. It was like $70. It broke immediately. And I was able to, you know, do a trail side repair and have left it pretty much broken, but always kind of semi-functional. I don't know, it's an awning. You just you use it until it doesn't work. I'm uh, this is one of the things on my list of projects. I'm gonna make him a fancier switch than some string. I guess the knobs on here are pretty flimsy, so that broke off. But man, get a load of the size of that spindle. Pretty wild. The slee, the slee rear bumper attaches with something similar to the Gamma V, or to, sorry, to the Descent. Um, this wing is attached to a bracket that mounts up to your frame, um, but the, the whole bumper itself is not mounted along the frame rail. It's, it's only these rear, rear mist and then a few bolts in here. Um, but man, I've seen this thing take some hits and it is impressive what a slee bumper will stand up to, especially on Zach or Lee's truck. Oh, with the arm out of the way.
oh I forget every time this is uh, the trail tailor tailgate mod um, but Zach has it packed full of a crap ton of really heavy stuff and it crashes down on me and uh, shoot I don't remember who made this drawer but it's nice super smooth it rattles a good deal I've never actually seen a drawer slide that does not rattle uh, so you know that's definitely something to be aware of Let's see. there we go but it is locking he's got rear lights oh I guess they're not hooked up and 12 volt USB Oh yeah, that's off. And this is just like a little accessory panel, I think. But anyway. Zach, are those traction boards? Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Looks like it. There you go. In the back of my truck, I've got a one-sided single sleeping setup. I'm single, therefore only one person. Big drawer, little drawer, refrigerator, which takes the place of the second row seats. Although that one is still um, usable, I've just got it folded down so that I can sleep across it. I keep a scepter mounted right here, and I have a little water pump for it. That's pretty handy when camping, etc., etc. I do not yet have a tailgate mod. Um, I personally don't want to put a lot of stuff in it like Zach has. It's just too heavy. I, you know, it's kind of cumbersome. Um, but I would love to have one for like cleans and dirties or something like that. I don't know. I think that'd be cool. These are custom drawers built with the help of my friend Jacob Nebraski. Thank you so much, Jacob. Um, he is a growing young carpenter. Not unlike myself, he's a spirited man. Thanks. Really appreciate your help. I carry every tool well in the words of lee you know i once asked him like hey what should i carry in my truck as far as tools are concerned and lee simply said every tool you've ever used pack it in your truck and that stuck with me because i would probably have to bring a hydraulic press if i really wanted to but i mean <laughs> i don't know there are a lot of tools that you can't pack, but everything you can is in this drawer. I uh, don't think these are particularly easy to open, but that's a good thing considering that you never want them to come open. I carry an Iron Man toilet because I like to live in luxury. I just repacked these drawers and I'm actually able to fit a jack stand that's torn down. Um, and uh, yeah, that is awesome. I'm gonna feel so much safer. The kitchen is sorely lacking. Uh, definitely something I've sort of overlooked. But it's there, I mean, it works. There's a stove too, so yeah. <laughs> I'm fairly certain that I forgot to mention something, but I think I hit most of the bigger components. I had a lot of fun making this. It's been a while since I've had a cruiser here that I could just, at the same time, go back and forth between them. Um, thank you, Zach, for letting me poke around your truck. And
and I hope you enjoy some of the new mods that I'm getting done for you. Um, the the T-Case re-gear is really a world of difference, so you're going to like that. Um, I'll get those axles rebooted and the, uh, the polyurethane LCA bushings put in for you. Um, yeah, I'm just hanging out. This weekend I'm going to Stark, Florida for a, a Southeast Adventure Expo. Something, 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 I don't know. I'm not very good with the acronyms, but I'll be there. Uh, if you're headed that way for any reason, I'll see y'all there. Um, but yeah, until next time.